Hello and welcome to Connected with Chrissy. Today I'm here with my beautiful friend, Carrie Kapkowski. She is a skincare expert and she is also a, um, what, how would I word this? Like you just had an explant. explant. Yeah, breast explant. Okay, and yes. how long had you had your implants? Because this is like a new thing people are now hearing about. Yeah. Um, the explant, or the implants causing like lots of issues. Yes, oh my gosh. So my attention totally got directed, you know, to the implant illness. Like mm -hmm. from several friends just knew that I had implants and that I had been ill for so long and they started sending me information. And I was like, no, I'm fine. It's not my implants. Mm -hmm. You know, stop sending me that. Stop putting that in my mind. And then lo and behold, you know, I had them taken out March the 13th. So of this year. So I was like the last surgery before the COVID shut down. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you look amazing. Thank you. Recovered. Thank you. So we're going to go back a few years yeah. and I want you to kind of take us on that journey of what were the symptoms? When did you start to get sick? Um, how did that evolve over the time before? And you're very intuitive as well. Yes. So I want you to tell us, you know, the intuitive hits that you got to. So take us back to where it all started. Okay. You've so, also lost yeah. a ton of weight. Yes, I have. So, so yes, I've had to do like a lot of things to kind of pull this all together. So my first implant, uh, surgery was saline implants when I was 26. Okay. So, you know, just suffering from low self esteem and looking for external things mm -hmm. to kind of feel well, you up. That was up. like the end thing. Um, like, yes, I, mean, I, mean, I got mine done. That was like the end well, thing. Well, when we were growing up, it was like Pamela Anderson Lee. 100%. And if you weren't bone thin with a giant set of hooters, baby, you were just not the thing. You yeah. It was like the polar opposite of Kim K, right? Yeah. So it's all butts now and it was all boobs then. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I got my first set and I had had my breasts were fine to start so mm -hmm. first of all that was the first hit against self-esteem and self-worth like trying to improve on something that wasn't broken right. so that was the first kind of universal nod that I got right um, and then I just I did not put together the illnesses that started to come mm -hmm. so if we go from the time I was 26 any friend of mine during the last 20 years is going to tell you that I have either canceled left a party, not been able to do something. I'm like a shut in, like where I would always be, you know, at home. Right. I just started having lots of female problems. And then the closer that I got so to you 40. Mean like ovary yes, issues ovary issues, and... period issues, oh. bleeding issues, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, um, anxiety, depression, all kinds of gastrointestinal problems, migraines, vision problems, sinusitis problems. Um, if I would get something that would be kind of like, let's say you had strep and I caught strep from you, mm -hmm. I would have the hardest time getting over it. Wow. So you would be way over it and I would still be taking rounds of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So there was definitely something immunocompromised that was going on. I had years of testing. That's what I was going to say. And you went oh to my doctor gosh. after doctor 23. After. 23, 23 doctors. different doctors all specializing in different things. And I would get the same thing over and over. Stay off the internet. You're not a doctor. You're a hypochondriac. You have anxiety. Let me give you some bipolar medication. Let me give you some depression medication. Instead of just like, I'd be like, I'm telling you, something's wrong. It was so frustrating. And ultimately, I didn't get it at the time, but I was just being kind of degraded and devalued because what I was saying was not being honored on the other end. Like they were just thinking that I was reading the internet and diagnosing myself. And, you know, of course my blood work would come back and it would be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there was nothing trackable in the blood. Right. So this just went on and on and on until I just had like this terrible event when I was like 42, I believe, where I was just, I'll spare you the details, but I was, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a, a hunting accident where you just gut something. It was mm -hmm. like blood everywhere. Very scary. So I finally found this wonderful doctor and she was like, this is not normal. No, we need to go and figure this out. So she started ultrasounds and then I started to get some of the answers. I had a grapefruit sized cyst on one of my ovaries. And no one else had thought to ultrasound. No one else no had one thought else. to do this is your any 23rd doctor? Yeah, it was my 23rd doctor. Wow. So she finally did everything and then offered me solutions. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started like starting to become kind of in sync with what I need to be doing. 
Um, it all sort of happened the same. So I had all these female problems. She was telling me I was either going to have to have a hysterectomy or an ablation or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I had stage four endometriosis. You don't know that until they actually go inside you and look. Okay. But I had bladder issues, constant infections, just constant gynecological type things that mm -hmm. were just like repeated and repetitive and just you get over it and then have to start over again. Um, so one of the last things that I was told was, um, you need to get your diet under control, reduce your stress, you because know, exercise. Much yes. I was like, point. yeah, 40 She's or like 50. tiny now, but like, <laughs> Thank you, you. you were a lot um, Yeah. So I would yo-yo 40 and 50 pounds, go up and down. I'm five, eight. So I held it well. So like when I tell my friends now that I've lost 40 or 50 pounds, they're like, no, yeah. like you weren't ever, you know. You didn't look like you were almost 200 mm -hmm. pounds, but yeah, I would yo-yo it up and I've down. Been that, I was 205 pounds when I delivered Elijah. Yeah. That's a lot of weight on it is. And I'm 5'8", too. Yeah. That's a lot of weight. Yes. It and and I, a lot of inflammation. It, and I gained the, it all over. So it's a good thing I did gain it all over. Same. Yeah. But I was just miserable. And I, mm -hmm. I always felt like I was in the wrong body. And my breasts were, I had 36G, baby. I was living it up. 36G. Yes. <laughs> no, they were big um but so yeah so um and still i'm not connecting the dots i'm not connecting the dots on my implants or having something foreign in my body mm -hmm. um and you know even my doctors were like maybe you're allergic to something let's go off gluten let's mm -hmm. go vegan let's go mm -hmm. vegetarian and my poor husband he's been on every single journey that yes. i have been on yeah. um trying all these different diets and so finally i was like you know what i'm so tired of hearing about my diet i'm gonna lose all this weight i'm gonna right. get, i'm gonna get on keto because it made sense it read as it just resonated yes. with me. Um, and I almost, I, I started to click into my power by listening to that higher voice that was telling me, this is the path you need to be on. So when I started losing weight, I had actually done a video about this where I was in the gym and I, I had just taken my body from like a size 12, 14 down to like a four, six. Mm -hmm. And I was exercising and I pushed my triceps down and my implant went whoop, all the way up to like this, my collarbone. And I was just shit, like looking in the mirror, working out. And I looked around to see anybody was looking. And I just like instinctually just pushed my breast implant down and it fell back into place. And I almost, I, I fell over because it cut like the blood off from this. Oh, there's an artery gosh, up here yes. and it just cut the blood off. And I felt horrible. You fainted? Um, I fell over. Yeah. Okay, wow. And I sat down for a minute. As soon as you pushed it away, then mm -hmm. it just, you know, blood goes back to your face. Um, so there was about two or three weeks there with just mass anxiety. And then I started to be like, that's oh my clicked. gosh, that's what clicked for me. I was up one night. I have a picture in my phone where I lay, I'm laying back. I have a lot of anxiety and that breast implant got really hard and it traveled and just sat there. I could visually, it looked like an alien in my chest guys. It was insane. Wow. The other side was so cold to the touch. Like I've said on a video, you could make Cold Stone Creamery ice cream. It was like a metallic, so cold to the touch feeling, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what was causing that? Do you know what was causing the cold? I mean, he Just never really told me. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. He never really told me. I told um, Dr. Dallas Buchanan, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing doctor. At Vivify, yes. Oh my gosh, he Tampa. gave me like a whole new yes. situation. And I love doctors that listen yes. and that care. and are connected. Yes. yes. So, like, I'm crying in his office because my whole life has been these jobs giant you know boobies with you know like it's my identity right. and he's trying to give me my options and you know honestly I just had a moment in my bathroom you know I was by myself and he was offering to put in a small implant or and at the time just the irony of not having fat to transfer um, just felt such a betrayal of my body so like that's I, another option yeah so if you do get an explant you could have fat transfer yeah like if you're a mommy and you have some extra fat down here you want to transfer i mean yeah. he does a beautiful job oh, at that so i mean that, it's fantastic you don't just have to have them removed and right you're done yeah well and i also had a lift and he removed yeah, it's called an in block capsulotectomy yes that's where they have. yeah he removes the scar tissue all that good stuff and then does like a little lift which i'm you know i'm i just feel so free and i've really just 
locked into my power as a woman. Mm-hmm. You know, I just by feel removing. Like, yes, by removing. Like well, I'm back down to my factory settings, honey. Yes, I'm at the girl. original <laughs> spot that you know the Lord wanted me to be at. So. so I resonate deeply with this because I have implants, and mm-hmm. I have often, since I've gotten on the spiritual path in the past twelve years, thought to myself, it's probably not that healthy to have these things blocking, <laughs> like the energy field and like blocking the meridians and stuff. But when I tuned into that, I don't feel like they're causing issues right now. Maybe yeah, one day. Yeah. But um, you're the second person I was I was telling you earlier that I know that's had an explant. Yeah. And then literally all of their symptoms, all of their illnesses, fibromyalgia, yeah. Yeah. Um, autoimmune, well, like, like it. Has I been. actually lost 17 pounds. Additional. You were already yes, down. Yes, I was already down. And I lost, I have never been this small even when I was like 13 years old. I got down to like 140 pounds after surgery. Where I just constantly peed off, I guess, just inflammation. Toxic. As my body, it just, mm-hmm. it just shrank all the way down. Mm-hmm. It was like, holy shit, like, I, it needs to stop. And I have never been in that space. And I think, you know, the decision, the real life changer for me, because if people know me, they know that I'm just a person that was posting pictures of my dog. I don't know how to use my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, this would have been out of the realm of mm-hmm. anything that I would have even agreed to do. Um, but I just had that experience when Dallas told me that he could put in a small implant and he needed my decision. I was in the bathroom and I told you when you're praying about something and you're putting a hundred percent of your spirit and soul Mm -hmm. and you are asking for that answer, it's given to you. Now you may not want to hear what that answer is, but I got a definite answer and I also was lucky enough to get like a vision of what I was going to look like. And I got a vision that I should trust Dallas. Mm -hmm. Whatever he's guiding and telling me to do, I knew that he was going to have the talent. I already, he already vibed with me. I already Mm -hmm. got a strong sense. He vibed with me and I follow him on Instagram. He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. This guy is like cool. Yeah. Um, And talented. Yeah. Yeah. So you can be cool and mess ethic, somebody. Yeah. Up, you know? But the, so my background is aesthetics, as is yours. But yeah. medical aesthetics and the ethics is not always there. So that's something that's really, really, really important in finding a doctor is tuning in to are they an ethical person? Yeah. Are they going to do what's best for me? Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking. Well, he told us that he went into school to put, you know, breast implants in, mm-hmm. and what he's finding is he's taking a lot of them out. And like I love it that he's calling. just so, yeah. you know, he's, he's open to whatever the woman wants. And right. I just felt honored. When I was in his office, I felt like it didn't matter whether I was crying and scared or whatever. He kept everything smooth and calm. And I just felt so confident with what he was advising me to do. But at the end of the day, you know, the Lord told me what to do. I'm very comfortable saying that because it was such a powerful experience. Yeah. Um, And he told me to not do anything, that I was meant to have my original body. I was meant to step into my power, my worth Mm -hmm. as a woman. I was meant to not be relying on, I don't need anything external. I have a lot that I can offer the world. And I finally, it just clicked into place. So as soon as I started healing, so I, don't know, about- he <laughs> I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. He just done. Uh, put he the took Holy out. Spirit in. Yes. He took out. He the took ex- more than my implants he out. He took out all the self doubt, the low self esteem. He took out all of that stuff and everything that I had done before, whether it was the hysterectomy, the keto diet, you know, just working on myself as a person, just emotionally trying to accept mm-hmm. that I'm never going to be like any other person. And when you start comparing yourself to other women, like I can totally be in awe of your beauty and what you have to offer. And I can look at you and and just marvel at what you are without being threatened by what you are because your journey is very different and I can learn from you. So I think as women, we need to exchange more absolutely, and honor each other more. And if one of us has got something going on, like You've got something going on here, honey. So, you know, I want to learn what you've got going on. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I think, too. I want to go back because I don't personally have experience with a hysterectomy but I want to talk about that because I know that that's something that a lot of women go through that's a very difficult and yeah. tough journey yes it so is do you mind talking oh absolutely about that? not no um so when I started having all the gynecological problems and she was telling me that we can do like an ablation which is just you know kind of a it's like, a, like burning. a laser laser it's like, yeah it like burns 
certain things off, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, or I can just go the extra thing and just have a hysterectomy and not and just be done with it. And again, you know, it was one of those things where I'm just like praying for what to do. Right. And I just did and not. And how old were you when this happened? 40, uh, 43. Okay. Yeah. It's so young. It is young. Um, but, you know, looking back at my life, it would kind of explain, like she told me I was probably infertile this whole time. So, you know. And would that have come from the endometriosis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so much damage. So it actually, Hard I asked for pictures because I'm, you know, geeky like this. But, <laughs> um, when she, she took pictures on the inside of me, and it actually looks like if you were to burn someone with like nicotine or a, a cigarette mark and it makes wow. that little mark, but yeah. it was on my bladder on my stomach, on my ovaries, all these little burn marks everywhere is what endometriosis looks like. Okay. Black, it just, it looks like, holy shit, it would feel terrible. And mm -hmm. it does, you know, it's very debilitating. Mm -hmm. And it just comes and goes with your cycle. So someday, you know, there's a lot of people that didn't even know I was sick. They had no idea. Well, autoimmune is often hidden. Yes, home. well, Only I was embarrassed. On, yes, because you, you know? can't see it so much. Yep. Yeah. Um, but then you feel it like you feel I would imagine I mean I've had um, like autoimmune symptoms but then yeah. I jump right on them the second I have anything I run right to my little natural yes. Dr. Nawada <laughs> yes. um, who I interviewed here a few weeks ago um, but you it's not something people didn't know I was taking eight to ten Benadryls a day right to keep the histamine down until yeah, I started think, seeing her absolutely I think it's like it's another thing, thing that women do it's yes. like you're trying to put on this persona for everyone else because you're thinking this is what they want from you mm -hmm. so I wasn't you know only people that were really up underneath right. me all the time could really know that I was struggling you know right. and really get what it was going through but yeah, so I had a hysterectomy um, like October the 25th of 2017. Okay. And she was like, wow, you should feel much better. I mean, this should really put you on your path. But instead of doing that, it's even, she left my ovaries. Mm -hmm. So she cleaned both of those up just because of my age. If I would have been 55, 60, she'd have taken them. Just okay. Just so we'd get rid of the chances of anything happening. Okay. Um, so she left them in there and my body still just sort of spiraled into menopause. So that was kind of like the first thing where I knew something just wasn't like exactly right. It mm -hmm. still wasn't synced up, which kind of propelled me to do keto. So I kept trying um, because I'm more like an athlete's diet. So mm -hmm. high protein, mm -hmm. vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, lower carb, but you still eat rice and things great, like great, that. Great. Um, that did not work for me. A macrobiotic didn't work. Vegan didn't work. Vegetarian didn't work. I was just being depleted. And I was like, well, this ketogenic diet sounds like something that I can jive with. Isn't because, it interesting how different things will resonate oh with gosh. you? And you just know, like, I eat pretty much only carbs and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, how do you eat carbs and fruit? And I'm like, that's just what works for me. The yeah. protein diet actually makes me huge, like, big yeah. and bulky. Yeah. Like, so, but I just sort of, after years and years of playing Trying, around yep. with different things... I'm like, I just know my body. I do really yeah. good on a lot of fruit throughout the day. And then at nighttime, maybe like rice and avocado yes. or like something, you know, real carby. A right. toast, you know, and people are like, how do you eat like that? I'm like, you have to, everybody's molecular structure is so different. Absolutely. You have to really tune in to like what works for you. Yes. So you got that inkling that the keto was potentially going to well, be Well, so I'm it. laying around there just sick as a damn dog, healing from the hysterectomy. And I, I'm like a researcher by nature. I am too. I will I read and read and mm -hmm. read. I watch like 3,000 videos on keto. I mean, I could, wow. I, I look, well, I'm a keto coach now and a wellness oh, wow. coach. So yeah, so I can help you out of any kind of ditch you might happen to be in, Ooh. you know? Um, so yeah, so I just started reading and the more I read about what that means to be ketogenic, it's, it's literally, you're just switching your fat, your, your mm -hmm. burning, your, mm -hmm. what your cat body's burning. Yes. So instead of it burning carbs and sugar, it's going to burn fat. So right. we're going to give it more of that. But I thought, well, if fat's good for your brain, your hair, your really skin, good. and I can honestly, I do a lot of fat too. Oh my God. Gosh, yeah. it transforms your skin, skin and hair. Like the and Foxy everything. Glow skincare came out of me noticing what coconut oil, avocados, mm -hmm. black olives, all, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, look, looking at what it did to my body mm -hmm. when you remove sugar. So I started to get better then. Still wasn't right. Mm -hmm. I looked good. I felt good. I had more energy, but there was something that just wasn't. It just felt like literally I had a foreign something in my body. And I, but I'm so looking back, it's like, damn, how could you not see that it was two giant toxic, not so fun bags? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it finally clicked into 
place because of my stepdaughter. So she is a nurse, and you know, honey, she knows about these doctors. Yeah, she knows what oh, the hell's yes, going they on. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, she they was do. interviewing folks and sneaking up on them while they was doing surgery. Bless mm -hmm. her heart, she was getting all up in their business. Yes. Like, nope, you're not going to do. It. You're not touching me. Yeah. Like, so she finally found Dr. Dallas Buchanan. I sound like an infomercial. I don't even care. He's amazing. Vivify plastic surgery. Yes. In Tampa, Florida. I mean, he can do. All the stuff. I know. haven't actually been there yet, but I'm You're going. going. I'm going next You're time going. we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so she really, really liked him, and I just trusted yeah. her so much, you know. And I, I knew that she knew what the hell she was doing. Yes. So she went in like two weeks before me, so I really got to see the whole situation before I, I had chance to jump off the wow. ship, you know. So that was very comforting, mm -hmm. and I saw her results, even though we were having different things done. I mean, she would tell me that this guy was whatever. She would let me know the, for sure. The real, the real deal, deal. Yeah. yeah. So she was so happy with everything. So I went into it with a, a with the Lord's approval, a yes. plan. I knew exactly what I wanted yes. this to be. And then just other, I just call them like little human, humanly, you know, little insecurities that pop up. Mm -hmm. I just think that's normal to have that going in and out of your brain space, that negative energy sometimes that you have right. to battle against, you know. Um, but um, everything just went fantastic so you know i was sort of bracing myself for you the know they've got oh yeah so they were huge they were huge mm -hmm. yeah and now i'm like a so i don't it's hard to tell but like yeah, a 36 b like yeah. i call these runners boobies they're wonderful i've never I'm been actually able having to having like perky envy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well at my age so i'm 46 so at my age if they can be sitting up here like you know yeah, i'm good they're wonderful yes yeah, so yeah. it gives you more i'm more confident now than i have ever been in my life right i always hid those it was always a spectacle. I always hide mine. Isn't that Have weird? Have you ever seen me with a cleavage picture? No. Never. No, and, and that's never. so strange because you would think, people would think nope. that you'd get them to produce that mine. result. But mm -hmm. no, I never found it made me look better in a top. It was like I had to buy tops that were gigantic. Do you see how this is Yes. So? <laughs> I had to sew because I am a little body yep. with a 34 double D and I had to sew this little top so that the buttons wouldn't, but I couldn't wear a bigger top. It would be too big. Yeah. It's too big everywhere else. Yeah. So, um, you know, <laughs> Dr. now I'm going to be in there going, Dr. Dallas, help. <laughs> uh, if you don't have, well, mine had exploded. Yeah. So I don't have any issues. I'll yes, say that. Yeah. So, yeah. and I, that think, I know of. But if you do, if you have like, if everything else is coming back normal and you and have implants and you can't feel, you can't find anything else, yeah. it's worth just your consideration, exploring. just exploring yeah. what that might be. Because my mammograms a few days before came back perfect. There was no problem. When he opened me up, he found a little cyst that was starting to grow or a little node or something mm -hmm. in there that was starting to grow. And then this had completely ruptured. So I actually lost a lot of my breast tissue. They would have been a slightly larger mm -hmm. had it not been so damaged underneath there. So um, a few days after when I was finally, because you're bandaged up with drains and the whole yes. nine yards, you know, and he was kind of telling my husband, like, she may have an emotional response. You know, we're going to kind of prepare for the visual of that. But whenever she's ready, you're just going to prop her up in the bathroom and, Help her take the, it's okay to remove the bandages and mm -hmm. let's look. And I honestly, it was, it was, it was truly divine. When I saw you, myself. She loved it. Yeah, she when was, I saw myself for the she first was like, time. yes, yes, this I knew that this was yeah. what I was supposed to look yeah. like, you know, and. I mean, you look wonderful. So Carrie yeah. and I have been following each other on Instagram for years, but this is the first time we've actually met in real life. Um, and I was so attracted to you and your story right now yeah because you're i only used to see the dog yeah <laughs> <laughs> cute, yes cute little thing right right but i then i've watched you emerge over the last few weeks and i knew you're deeply spiritual you made the bracelets and you know yeah. the, and but i did not know you're an esthetician um so i have known about carrie for a long time but i've watched this like emergence yeah of, like a phoenix, that's really what it was a phoenix fucking rising yeah yeah, and I'm going to own that, too. I'm going to step right into that it compliment. It has been amazing to watch. And my husband even said, because he follows <laughs> Carrie, too. My husband goes, you and Carrie have been hanging out. 
he was like, <laughs> y'all are like sassing on the same vibe mm-hmm. because I too have had an emergence in a different way Yes, over the yes. last few months. Yeah. And I was like, no, we haven't, but I'm going to reach out to her and like get her on the internet with me because I just could feel, and your story really needs to be told too, because there's a lot of people dealing with this very same thing right now. Um, I am 39. You are, I'm almost 40. You are 46. Mm -hmm. Like, and we have, I talked to you guys last week about my parasite cleanse and the journey about the demons coming up with that. And now we're talking to Carrie about the explant and the things that were blocking yeah. and sort of causing. That's exactly and, what it is. It's a complete block. And I think when you block. round 40 years old, when you start coming over that hump, anything that blocks your hormones, you're going to know about it. No yes. doubt. And we're also, because of the paradigm shift, and I know as a spiritual yeah. person, you know about this right now, uh, God's spirit universe actually doesn't want us to have any blockages right. anymore. <laughs> Yes. He's like, bitch, I need you mm-hmm. to like come into clean yourself. Up. Yeah, That's clean right. it up. I need you to come into yourself. Well, there's literally no time for negativity, there's, criticisms, yeah. toxic energy, people that are going to bring you down, make fun of you, do whatever. And I've already experienced all of that. I've just been on social media for a short period of How time. How long has it been? About eight weeks, six weeks? Yeah, mate, yeah. Six, just, I mean, yeah. I just got a Facebook. Like, seriously, I was, yeah. I, I was so technologically behind but it, it, it built such a tremendous self-esteem so I went from barely being able to like use my phone and post it without help to now I'm making and editing videos yeah and she's music like behind this it is your internet best, this is your internet best friend Carrie yeah. <laughs> this is your virtual best friend Carrie yeah and I'm, I'm just like right yes into that. girl yeah um well I felt it I was like oh yes we have got to hang out so was the recovery on that was that easy hard you know um it, it was hard. It, uh, I don't want to, you know, misrepresent. It was hard physically. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. So my hysterectomy was way worse. Okay. Um, uh, this was like something that was just like physically kind of challenging for about six weeks. Okay. And then mentally. I mean, so, but we were quarantined anyways. How yeah. perfect was this timing? Yeah, that her, your that's Your uh, surgery was scheduled March 13th? Yeah, it was the last one before he wasn't on allowed three, to on, do. On three, Friday the 13th. 313, which yeah. is also very divine numerology as well. Yeah. Um, so what a perfect time to recover from a surgery. Yeah, absolutely. Like we got quarantined shortly after that. So, yeah. um, well I woke up and everybody was quarantined. I didn't like, know so, so much happened? medication, right? Yeah. You're like, what yeah, the so happened? that was so divine, but I think, you know, I, the, the real click for me, I was still kind of beating myself up and still kind of feeling like maybe I was less than because I, you know, they would feel like something was missing. And I literally, my birthday is July 18th. I literally woke up that morning and I looked myself dead in the mirror and I was like, you are not going to be mean to yourself. Not one more fucking day. No, no, no. And as soon as I made that declaration, as soon as I made eye contact with myself, it's like something just clicked and fused in me and I started manifesting every dream. It was like, if you have confidence... It don't matter what that hurdle is. It don't matter what it is. It, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant because you're so focused on your, your journey, where you're supposed to go. And can you look in the camera and say that mantra for us one more time? You are not going to be mean to yourself not one more fucking day. Amen, honey. That's all it took. That's all it took. Because everybody has such a a beautiful thing to share with everybody else. And I'm just really about, I was on the phone with a complete stranger this morning. She said she saw what I was doing and that she's having all of these problems. And I was just honest with her. You know, I was telling her, do not give up. Don't give up hope. She was telling me her doctors think she's crazy. Yeah, because I think that there's also a level of thinking, and you and I are the exact opposites of this, levels of thinking, like once you get past a certain age, that you got to fall into some sort of category. Yep, or give up. No, 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 sisters. No, we're going to (laughs) fight that. Yes, we are. Like, no, 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 sisters. And I think that, you know, now I feel more powerful than I've ever felt. And I know you feel more powerful than you've ever Yeah, felt. because the wisdom is in there. Yes. So you may think <laughs> you're losing the youth, but I mean, there's yes. all kinds of tips and tricks to Listen, get all this going sisters. here. I mean, yes. come on. 
I mean, the physical part is the easy part. The mental part, really yeah. stepping into who you are, is the yeah. hard thing. Because the physical is easy to fix. I mean, yeah. all of our Doctor tech- Dallas Buchanan Dr. just said Dallas vivifies <laughs> us. <laughs> um, because, and I actually see Injector Jess, um, who's amazing too for my face. Yes, um, you are gorgeous. So, but I'm not. I don't. So that's a whole other level of like so that I don't lie about. Yeah. People are like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm almost 40. And they're like, oh, well, wait, how do you? So I hate when people lie. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, sister, I have sculpture underneath my eyes. I have um, disport in the rest of my face. Yeah. I have radius in my cheeks and my temples. Yes. I have a little lip filler. Like, it's important to, like, own that, too, because otherwise we're setting up really shitty standards for right, people. Right, right. Like, like, I don't, I wouldn't look like this at almost 40 years old if I didn't have a little help. Right, right. So, but you also take tremendous care of yourself. Oh, and I'm a, all just listen, sort of girl, during my pregnancy, which obviously you can't do anything when you're pregnant. Yeah. Every night I'm still with my little, like, <laughs> skin care. And, like, but even when I was breastfeeding and only sleeping, like, two or three hours at a time, yeah. I was still, like, smooth my skin care. Yep. and all that kind of stuff like so that I mean if you don't have good skin yes none of the rest of it's gonna do a whole and lot. that's I think that's another reason I got so motivated to people do ask me about my skin yes, and they do want to know and it can be very overwhelming when I say I don't eat sugar and I drink water. It's so cliche. I mean, everybody says that, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's so true. But mm-hmm. the next step of that is, you know, eating the fat that I was eating. I, I mean, love, I, my hair has yeah. never looked so shiny. It's yes. never grown so long. And my I skin, drizzle my French fries. So oh I my air gosh. fry my French fries, but then I drizzle them with like avocado yes. oil and yes. sea salt. Mm. It really shows up. So I was thinking like, if I'm putting this in my body and it's making this result, I wonder if we can make skincare. Yes. And I just have a longtime mentor that was really guiding me in the that correct way. That was what way. I was ask. How did, because you're an esthetician by trade. Yes. A more organic, natural esthetician. I was actually a medical esthetician. Yes. Um, so how did all, so let's, hold on. We've got <laughs> the Foxy Glow skincare yes. line. So I want you the to actually. babies I never had. Yeah. So how did all this, because this is actually formulated for you. This is not an MLM. This is not. No, this like, is my stuff. Yeah, this is. Yep. This is my skincare. So So it's basically, I just say it's nutrition for your face. So it's all the things that we would want to put on our face. So hyaluronic acid, you know, olive oil, coconut oil. Oh, I want to take baths and hyaluronic acid. Yes, I know. Give it to me. It just holds all the moisture in so you can look, you know, plump. So vitamins A, C, E, meringue oil, camellia oil. I mean, all the good stuff. All the good stuff. Tell me about this. So this is my glow up serum. So... This is a little baby to me. I know. I'm like, this is the one so I want to talk about first. It's vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and collagen. Okay. Um, and it has a couple other little essential oils and things in there. But it just it just makes you look radiant. And that's really, you just want your skin to look healthy. It will heal itself if it's given proper nutrition and, of course, rest and diet. All the things that you hear about so much. Um yeah, I okay. love that. And then the so pink fox this is our moisture. mostly our hyaluronic acid, mm-hmm. our HA. Which yeah, and vitamin C, which is going to be good for sun damage. Pigmentation. And, yes, pigmentation, absolutely. yes. Um, that's pink fox moisturizer. Um, that's also amazing. So that has a lovely blend of all kinds of little ingredients, magical ingredients. Um, just going to bring the moisture, keep the moisture nice and locked in your mm-hmm. face. It just this gives... is for more mature skin or any Nope, it's skin? all skin types. It's good for all skin types, so Ooh, it's it just like mm-hmm, it's just nutrition for your face. So I like to really, really simplify it. So it's just gonna make your face look like the best version of your skin. Mm. Yeah, I can feel yes. my skin like eating. Yes, it's it just up. nice. And, yeah, it's nice and light, yeah. and it just goes in. It's like effortless, so you don't have to really be thinking Ooh, about what's this. Oh, magical! <laughs> so the smell of that. I'm like so, this is body. I love this because of my tattoos. So this makes your tattoos, if you have any, just like jump off your body, honey. It smells oh like God, success. It smells like heaven. <laughs> it smells like I always say it smells like a hammock oh on a water God, view in the Caribbean. So good. It's so good. I love it. So um, I put it in my hair. I put it all over my face, my oh, body. You can shave with it. it. Um, after sun, it's fantastic. After sunless tanning, when your skin gets so dry. So if you have dry skin, I do. Your body I'm will love it. Always out in the pool. 
And once it goes in, it's just so nice and soft and just yeah. yummy and just leaves the most delicious little Oh my God, it smells, smells literally no. like I'm going to eat it. <laughs> I'm it like, does smell yummy. It smells yummy. like the fruit that I love so yes, much. Yes, <laughs> I know. It's so awesome. Um, and then this. Okay, so that the nitty -gritty. is the nitty gritty face grow. I mean, because let's get down to the nitty gritty. Um, it has ground apricot. It's going to give it that little edge that it needs. Um, it's it's good for all skin types, but obviously if you have you know really acneic skin that's really really broken out, you're not going to want to scrub it to death with this. But you can Do scrub the your legs. On this it's like amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I shave and exfoliate my legs with it. Mm -hmm. Your heels, your feet. It's safe for your skin. Now my skin, probably your skin, as I'm looking at it, you can scrub this all over your face every day as a nice facial scrub, and you'll be good to go. If you have other challenges, broken capillaries, you know, little breakouts on your face, once or twice a week, Ooh, and you'll be good, good to too. go. Yeah, it's all really just clean. This is a lot. There's like a lot of essential oils in here. Mm -hmm. um, Vitamins. Rose hip oil. Yeah. What is asiatica? It's an herb. Yes. A medicinal herb. Yes. Okay. And what does so, that do? Inflammation, puffiness. I just have, I and we discussed love. this, you know, I just have like that recessed looking dark look. Yes. So I just Deficit. put this all o o over and I, I'm just obsessed with it. It works oh immediately. Oh my so. gosh. And yeah, anybody over the age of 33 needs a good eye cream, y'all. Oh my gosh. I'm just saying. Like, yes. Really, I started with medical grade, um, skincare when I was like 25. Oh, wow. Because I start, I started to see that uh, my skin, and I'm a sun girl, you can see, yeah, like, yeah, but I always man. wear, yeah, I always wear sunscreen. Ooh, but I could see that even with Botox and fillers, which I've been doing since I was 25, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's just be honest, um, that my skin was not the texture that I wanted it. So somebody yeah. introduced me to a line um, a lot like this and it just makes such a difference because you yeah. can do all of the things in the world with your doctor um, but if your skin looks like shit and you're not hydrated yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, awesome there's just so many things that go into how your skin's gonna look so obviously smoking bad you know lack yeah. of sleep is not bad, drinking not enough water yeah, not taking off your makeup but yes. you know you don't really need a lot of chemicals on your face no. you need a clean diet a Absolutely. clean way of life and just give your body you know your skin just that little extra thing that it needs because at the end of the day if your skin is glowing or has a radiant sheen to it yeah. that automatically signals health absolutely yeah, so, um, and don't... people can feel that too don't yes. you think it's yes. like you can feel like clean holistic yeah. energy yeah you can feel in people wow this is amazing so now that we're talking about spirituality segue yes um let's talk about your spiritual path and how that has oh, wow. played into <laughs> Um, the transformation and now you're actually really openly living that which I love because you have such powerful gifts even spiritually that's why she's such a great coach such a great mentor yes. um, well, I'm willing I'm willing to give the information like selflessly so there's just yes. there's no shame in and my then game. there's this like deep intuitive knowing yeah. like you said God spirit universe yeah. told you in the bathroom yeah that you are supposed to take the implants out and not put anything in I get those things too. I was told last year to downsize. Yeah. And to yeah. simplify. Um, and thank God we did because. But see, now you're doing it. And I bet there was a time in your life when you would have rationalized your oh, way into your own decision making. Yeah. And you would have done something completely different. So, um, much, I don't know if you guys can see treated versus non treated. This is the you're treat, sparkly. The treated they can see your sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I don't think I was always comfortable discussing what my beliefs were. Has I mean, it been that way since you were little? Did you always get those intuitive hits? Um, you know, I didn't know what to call it, but I did have very strong gut emotions that mm -hmm. I would never, I didn't listen to. Mm -hmm. Really bad things happened over the course of my life that I was already told before it actually happened. I just, you know, you rationalize your way out of right. it. You're like, he's different or this circumstance right. is different or whatever is going to be different. And you just don't want to step into that you already know. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I was making a video and I was trying to tell everybody who's beating themselves up about straying off ketos. Like, stop. Stop beating yourself last up about straying rough. off the, diet. Last week's energy was super rough, too. Oh, heavy. This week so is heavy. much better. Yeah. Last week's energy is super rough. But we were clearing um, the Leo energy and going into the very Virgo grounded. Virgo, yeah. Virgos are grounded. So we're now in like harvest energy. Yeah. Um, that, you know, Leo's, uh, I, and I have a Leo North node, so I love my Leo's. 
Um, that Leo is a dramatic. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have some Leos in my life. It's dramatic. <laughs> right. So um, it felt very drama-fied last week, but um, I feel that that's settled this week because now we're in that very grounded Virgo energy. Um, so how did your family take to that? How do they take to it now? Like, how- I don't... I- do you are you open with people other than like me? Because I give people a platform, so I always ask. Yeah, people. I'm like I'm giving my intuitive spiritual. I actually beauty-based. just made that agreement with myself, like I said on my birthday, and I've been stepping into it since then. So if somebody has asked me, I've been very honest. I give it all to God. Yes, and I I just I don't really care whether you're on board with what I'm saying or not. It's not you know you're running you and you do you. I respect you. I see you, but I'm gonna see me too, Mm -hmm. and that's the part that I hadn't been doing. I hadn't been honoring myself and seeing myself and stepping into myself. I had been the kind of person that was constantly I was either too fat, too thin, too big Mm -hmm. boobs, this that. I'm not pretty. This la la la. You know, you just beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. But now. I will lift you as high as I can get you. And I've always been that way. So I was like, but what does that do to your spirit? Yeah. It's just like, there's like, you guys, if somebody would have been telling me about my best friend, the shit that I say about myself, I would have beat her ass in the Walmart parking lot. hundred percent. So then why am I, you know, and I have my husband to thank for that. He's Mm -hmm. the one that guided me. Like, stop talking about my wife this way. You're deeply hurting me when you say these terrible things about my wife, my best friend, Yeah, you know, and he he constantly lifted me and lifted me until I could lift myself so I do you know he's like it's such a tremendous guide and you know I I have God to thank at the end of the day but my husband Mike is he has changed my life I mean he's given me that love and everything that I needed that belief in myself he gets me yeah and when somebody gets you you're able to give yourself to somebody else because you just feel so confident. Having somebody Absolutely. accept you exactly how you are, yes. boobs, no boobs, hair, no hair, whatever was going on, he was right there telling me how awesome I was. Yeah. And you know, eventually if you keep trying with somebody that you see is struggling, they're gonna listen. You're putting that little seed in them and yeah. eventually they're gonna water that seed themselves and then stand out of the way. I mean, they're gonna be shooting up a tree in the middle yeah. of your world, you know what I mean? <laughs> if we have anything to yeah. do with it, so, exactly. I just found that I was chopping myself down before yes. I could get started, right. you know? So I'm just, I'm blessed and grateful that I came out of that 20 year fog, that 20 years of 20 just years. feeling like I wasn't That's enough. a long time. It's a long time, yeah. And you know what? Unfortunately, you know, that that guy, that Chadwick Boseman, just recently passed away. 43, the Black Panther actor. And, you know, everybody's posting online that, good Lord, they didn't even know he was sick. They didn't even know, you know, and I, you know, God rest his soul, I resonate with how hard that is to hide, you know, physical ailments. Mm -hmm. So I just urge everybody to be as nice and as compassionate as you can with people around you. You really don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're struggling with and you don't know if your kind words may get them where they're going. Truth. You know, so I just try to do that with every single person that I meet. I mean, I've been telling you that I'm surrounded by young women, young, powerful, beautiful, whether it's, you know, I'll just call them out. Alyssa Arnold at Art of Nails. I'm going to call out Michaela Boucher, Mm -hmm. my lash lady, Element Lash. Um, Megan Brady, my little hair girl that Mm -hmm. does all the hair. I'm sure I'm going to forget somebody, but all these young 20 something ish year old girls that are just stepping into their power. They don't even know they're doing it. They're so talented wow. and they're so, they just don't even know they're doing it. Maya Vo does my little toes. She got me on a Christian path mm. and has known me since, oh my God, like 15, 16 years ago. Wow. And she's constantly guided and constantly, you know, like just led me in the right path, you know. But until you see it, until you get it and recognize that you're the one that needs to sync up with that. Mm-hmm. You're going to be just floundering around out here Absolutely. making bad decision after bad decision. And know? also we were talking about like accepting yourself. Yeah. Because she said, oh, I just love it when you post the bloopers of people like walking, <laughs> yeah. in your, walking in your shot and you getting all pissed off and saying the F word. And I said, yeah, I said, I would have tried to hide that five or six years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because of being a spiritual person and this and that. But I'm very open with everybody now that, like, it takes a lot to, like, stay grounded, stay in the light. That's um, right. Be honest and authentic with who I am. I went back to wrestling when I was 38 wow. years old. Yeah. Same. I had not wrestled in eight years. I started a full-time modeling job when I was 30 years old. Yep. 
See, that's amazing. So that's just taking limitations off yourself. You know? And every day we're moving yeah. a little more, moving a little more. Um, I think if I like really marinated in the thought that I was 46, it probably would put up some kind of barrier because what yeah. I know that's supposed to be like. Yeah. But you know, Miss Jennifer Lopez, she doesn't, she Listen, doesn't have time for that stuff. Legit, honey. Gwen Stefani. Yes, um, honey, they don't have time for that mess. They're just busy looking like they're 35. They don't give they, a damn. I mean, not even it. more like 30. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just. And not that that's the, we're not saying that like looks or everything. It's like a feeling and it's something it's a that vibe. you exude. It's a vibe. Yeah, it's an ageless vibe that they're still dancing and doing their yeah. thing and doing whatever they want. And that's the whole goal. <laughs> Somebody said something on my Instagram the other day. They said, it's the hottest old lady on the internet. And I thought, how old school and what a, what a stuck paradigm. <laughs> like, what a stuck paradigm you're in. Right. Like, do we, is age even a thing? Yeah, I don't even like, think it's a thing Like, when you've got Jay Lo and Shakira yes at the halftime at the halftime show both in their 40s and or 50s yeah, yeah. and like going swinging around, around the pole swinging <laughs> around the pole like they're 22 I'm like ageism is gone yeah it really I don't is think, and, and again when we move into like a light body this is coming from a spiritual perspective when you move into a light body you actually reverse the aging process in general i know you worked with a yes. shaman i worked mm -hmm. with a shaman yeah uh, on deep deep levels of healing yeah um and when you let go of that stress and that poison and it that toxicity, translates it translates yeah it comes out through here yes it does and it comes out into the world and then you attract there there becomes like a thing of like i, I love because i'm in you know these um in the world that we live in, people want to put labels on things. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, what are your goals? And I'm like, where spirit leads me? Right. I stopped doing goals like a long time ago because that yeah. was my downfall in my 20s. Right. Goal, by the time I'm 26, it has to be here. Yeah, these boundaries. There's always these time limits on Why? everything that women do this to themselves. Why? Louise Hay started Hay House, which is yeah. like one of the biggest spiritual um, publishing companies in the world. She started when she was 60. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, My mentor started a brand new career when I think she was in her mid-40s. Thank you, sister. And she's 66 yes. now. Thank you. So she's the one that kind of guided this whole process. But, you know, sometimes people see things in you that you don't see yet. Absolutely. So, you know, like my husband saw so many things and I was like, God, is he going to wake up one day and just head out the damn door yeah. and see that I'm not all that? Yeah. But he was right and I was wrong. That's the way that is. <laughs> I am bad. I am whatever. all bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, so she saw it too. I mean, she'd been yeah. trying to get me to do things like, you know, eight years ago. Right. So um, I, until you're ready to see it, until you take off all those boundaries and all those protocols and all that criticism and toxic energy, mm -hmm. just let all that shit go. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? You don't ever have to wish anything bad on any other woman. No. I mean, even an enemy. You, you can look at her like, oh God, I wish she'd gained 15 pounds. She's such a this, that, and the other. You mm -hmm. don't have to wish that because Absolutely. the world is going to serve that. It's a mirror. Right on its own. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. going to take care of whatever yeah. you want or wishing against. So you might as well just wish nice things for Absolutely. everybody. Absolutely. If you mirror out what you want to be, like it just comes back to you. Yeah. And you can't be worrying about what's going on with this negativity over here or even like family members and stuff. Yeah. Like it just let them, I, my guest yesterday, um, was like let them be over there and like send them love mm -hmm. he's like but i'm gonna be over here in this space that's right yeah and if you have to sit by yourself in your space your tribe will come tr through i mean they, they, they will, will find they you. will find you because i was sitting there you my own that, business yes. and you know she just sent me this dm i've been following her for years and she just sent me this dm and it was actually something that i had sort of like I needed somebody like you that was kind of already doing what I kind of envisioned I was supposed to be doing. Um, and you just happened to, I mean, it was just divine. You just I mean, happened sister, to text me. This girl needs to be on camera. <laughs> I've been on camera for like the last 20 years. I'm like, this is actually all I know. Actually, when I try to be quote unquote, you know, fit into like a, one of those, you know, regular boxes, I don't fit very well. Yeah. But like I'm watching you and going, yes, like you step into it. And I love a woman coming into that like power. So thank you for coming oh, on. Oh yes, yes, uh, What do you want to leave people with today? I just want everybody to, you already have everything you need to run the race that you've been set out to have to run. And you just have to get in sync with that, 
there's like I call it the inner dog walker. So when you walk your dog, you know you're pulling him, keeping him, trying to get on the path because he'll mm-hmm. be on the mailbox, he'll lay in a flower, lay in the dirt, and uh-huh. gets distracted. You have somebody, the Lord's doing mine, but you have somebody that's leading you. Yep. Universe is leading you. Spirit's yep. leading God's you. Spirit, universe. <clears throat> yep. You're just gonna take that inner nod. So when you feel you're being jerked, trust yourself. Yeah. Trust yourself that your body is telling you. Trust yourself that your spirit is telling you. Just let go of all the toxic energy. Like and that it's really at the end of the day, that's all you just need to focus on being as positive as you can, even when the yeah. circumstances look negative. Yeah. Just be positive and believe in yourself. And that would be what I would highly discipline. advise. Discipline, yeah. Yeah, discipline is good. Even if you're discipline spiritual. is wonderful, yeah. Yeah, discipline is good. So if you feel that you need to get on camera or you feel that you need to go see this doctor, yeah. like go with that. My intuition has led me to places, and I know yours yeah. has, that I'm Absolutely. like, what, really? What, wow. Or it has saved me from things, too. Yeah. That I'm like, wow, we would have really been up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Right. Like, had I not listened to that intuition. So yes, thank it's you amazing. For thank you so on. much. Yes, I appreciate and, um, it. And if you guys want to find Carrie, you can find her at the Foxy Glow yes. on Instagram. And you said you have a Facebook, too? Yes, it's also the Foxy Glow. Oh, so easy yeah, peasy. Easy, easy. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. This is Connected with Chrissy. Thank and you. And we will see you next time. All right. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.